In this tutorial, we're going to do a short introduction to for loops. Now, to do this, we're going to have to open up a script. So I'm going to just go ahead and click open up script. I don't really want it to be docked, but we'll leave it docked for now. Um, we'll go ahead and save this. We'll call it intro underscore to underscore underscore for and loops. So we're going to just talk about for loops for now. I'm going to start with clear and CLC. I want to start with a clean instance of MATLAB. Clear again, clears the workspace. CLC clears the command window. Let's talk about the basic structure of a for loop now. I'm going to say for i equals 1 to 5. And each time through, we're just going to display i. In one of our previous videos, we talked about the display function, how it only displays one variable. But we need to talk about several different things here. So we're just going to go ahead and display i. I'm going to run this. And we see that down in the command window, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So first, let's talk principally about the pieces of the for loop and what a for loop actually does for us. A loop is a repetitive structure. It's for any process that repeats over and over again. So here we're going to repeat something five times. Now i is called our control variable. i equals 1 to 5. This is where we define our control variable. 4 is the beginning of our structure. End is the end. So we have to start with a for loop, or a for loop has to start with 4 and end with end. But this defines how many times we're going to go around. Now, here's the interesting part. In MATLAB, when I say that this defines, this control variable defines how many times we're going to go around, let's explore that. So here I'm going to display a blank space. Okay. Again, the display function displays one thing on one line. Here we're going to put a blank space. If I run this, notice that right after 5, I have my FX entry, data entry line right below. Now I have another blank space. I want to do that because I'm going to say for j equals 2 by 2 to 10. Again, we're going to display, this time j, and end. Back when we talked about entering arrays into MATLAB, we said that if we have a one-dimensional array, as in a single row, we can have a starting value, a stepping value, and a stopping value. So this is going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Now, here's the interesting part. If I run this now, when I loop for i, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. When I loop for j, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Now the reason this is interesting is the following. We started at 2, we ended at 10, we stepped by 2. A for loop repeats the number of times that there are elements in the control array. So this is exactly like forming a one-dimensional array. I could come down here and say j equals 2 by 2 to 10. And I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements. This loop repeated 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So the values in the, the control array change with each iteration of the loop, but the number of times the loop iterates is equal to the size or the number of elements in that array. So I'll give you one more example. Display, again, a blank space, because this time I want to say 4. k equals, now let's just give MATLAB some random numbers, negative 7, 34, 98, uh, negative 2, and one more, 1. We're going to display k and end. Now we have three loops which should all repeat five times. They just happen to use different values. I'm going to run this. And now I have i, j, and k. Each element was displayed each time through. So the first element, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. The first element, second element, third, fourth, and fifth. The first element, second element, third, fourth, and fifth. So the important distinction here is that when we are using a for loop, okay, we the loop itself repeats the number of times that is equal to the number of elements in the control array. All right, so we're going to get a little bit deeper into for loops next time. I just wanted this to be a brief introduction. I wanted you to take that one point away that the number of times a for loop repeats is equal to the number of elements in the array. So till next time.